Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a wonderful weekend and you're ready to get started in the week. Uh, thank you for being on the call, and we'll go ahead and get started. As usual, questions, concerns, I always interested in hearing what you guys have to say, so go ahead and type those in, and we will, uh, uh, I would be delighted to address those. Also, um, guys, uh, and those of you that we had a huge call on, on Friday, but I just want to reiterate, if you've got problems, concerns, things you'd like to work on, let us know on that Friday call, because then we can actually work on those things, because you're not the only one who's wondering how to deal with something, whether it's a, something a client said or some little uh, glitch that you ran into uh, in, a, in a meeting or in a, at an event. We're, those are great questions to uh, talk to us about on Friday, so uh, that would be wonderful. So today I want to talk about our automatic uh, ATM machine, auto, uh, cash machine. So let's see if you guys can remember. What are the two skills? If, you're, if you are phenomenal at two skills, you will have created an ATM machine. So what are those two skills? Let's see if anybody's been listening the last uh, couple months. If, you're, if you are <clears throat> phenomenal at two skills, you've created yourself an ATM machine. What are those? Well, I got one. Yeah, we got a lot of guys that got one. Ah, Tony got it. <clears throat> Tony got both. So we had a lot of guys that got one, and, and then uh, uh, we got a couple guys now that got both. So that is the elevator conversation and the 21-point checklist. So... Why would those two things create an ATM machine? Because if you're great at the elevator conversation, what are you going to get a, a ton of people to do? If you're great at the elevator conversation, what are you going to get a ton of people to do? 21s, exactly. So if I, if I needed to get in front of somebody, I would just walk, you could walk up to just any old person, do an elevator speech and say, hey, would you do that for me? I mean, if you're that good at it, guess what? You, you, you're only one conversation away from a 21. And then obviously if you're good at a 21, then you're going to be able to get them to move, or at least uh, uh, people that have money, you're going to get 90% of them to move all the money to you. And why can I say that? Why can I look you straight in the face and tell you that you're going to get, if you're good at the 21, you're going to get 90% of people to move all their money to you? Why can I look you straight in the face without even a blink? Why can I go on national television and say that and, and not have anybody be able to call BS on me? Why, why is that the case, guys? Let's see if I can get anybody to answer that one. A lot of great answers in the first one. I like what Roy said. Roy said if they, they won't have an advisor after 21. Uh, let's see. You didn't make it because it works because you don't have any talk by others. So we've got a lot of uh, great, great uh, answers here. But here's the answer that I would say. So all the answers you said, they're all absolutely valid, but here's the answer I'd say. If somebody explains to me, in their own words, for an hour and a half to two hours, why they can't trust their guy and they need to leave him right now with all their money, what are they going to do? If they, if they tell me in their own words, if they explain to me in very logical terms, if they Socratically sell me, if they're telling me that they're going to leave their guy because they can't trust their guy anymore, whether it's a real guy or they're, if they're a do-it-yourself and it's a company or a 401k and it's a company they're working with, if they explain to me why they need to leave their guy or their, uh, their, the entity that's managing their money, what are they going to do at the end of an hour and a half, two hours? See, if they explain it to me, what, if I explain to you why I'm a... Uh, pro-lifer for an hour and a half to two hours, if I explain to you why I'm a pro-choicer for an hour and a half to two hours, and then at the end of that two hours that I, I, I flip my, you know, I, I, I flip my opinion, what are you going to think about me? You're going to think I'm nuts. So why do I say that you're going to get 90% of people to move all their money? It's because are there people that will borrow your lawnmower, bring it back broken, and they don't think there's a problem with that? But is that the typical person, or is that is that a, a, a an atypical person? Is that that 10% of people out there? Because 90% of people are totally reasonable, and if a reasonable person explains to me, not not me explaining to them, because here's the guys, get this, get, make sure we're clear here. If I explain to somebody else for an hour and a half to two hours why their guy is screwing them, will they leave their guy? If I explain to them, I'm the advisor, and I explain to them why their guy is screwing them, are they going to leave their guy? I'm getting a lot of no's. I, I don't know, but I would guess no, because if I explain to them, they know I have an agenda, which is what? To get them to leave their guy so I can do the same thing to them. So, you know, it's like my wife told me when I had my, my epiphany, which is, 
a known evil is better than an unknown good, good. So they just look at you as being part of the problem. So, but uh, yeah, uh, so Bev, I would say, yeah, it, it, you might get them, but it's really, I don't have a clue. It's 50 50. Because, you know what, we all have been doing that forever, right? Trying to tell them why what they're doing is wrong and how well does that work? <laughs> Not well enough. But if they explain to you in their own words over and over and over why they need to leave their guy because they can't trust him, they're going to leave their guy. That's why I can say that you're going to close 90% of people if you do the 21 point checklist right. Because they're look, going to look really foolish if they explain to you why they can't trust their guy and then they stay with their guy. Make sense? So today I want to talk about half of this formula, and that is the elevator speech. So uh, some of you maybe have seen the the step-by-step -step guide on the 5Q elevator speech process. So um, now that though, that's that's creating a one-sentence elevator speech that will get people to say, "How do you do that?" There's a problem with that with what we're doing, and that is this uh, one-sentence elevator speech or this one sentence USP works if you have a very targeted market. So it works, uh, you know, I, I developed one for a guy who's working with, a, with teachers in a particular county in Florida and he, uh, he made over $350,000 in six months using just his elevator speech. But it was, very, it was very specific. It was for teachers in Florida and there was a time constraint on it. So that one sentence elevator speech only works if you have a very targeted market and it works even better if you have a time constraint on it. So if you've got, if you work with IBM employees and they've got a benefit that's going to end in six months, that would work extremely well. If, you have, if you're working with um, uh, railroad workers and they've got to make a decision about their pension in, in, in one year, it, would, it works very, very well. Unfortunately, we don't work in a very targeted market, do we? We work with people who are retired that have lots of money. See, so, so it's this kind of person that we're working with. People that, that are, um, uh, are doing fine. Are they going on the vacations they want? Yes. Are they driving the car they want? Yes. Are they seeing their grandkids when they want to see their grandkids? Yes. So these people virtually, do, do they think they have problems, guys? The people we want to get in front of, people that are retired with money, do they think they have problems? Let's see if I can get some answers. Do they think they have any problems? No. And, and on how? And, and, and here's the thing: How are they certain that they don't have any big problems? If you try to point out problems to somebody who's who's uh, got enough money to retire, is not sitting there in debt. I mean, they're doing, they're having a wonderful retirement. If you try to show them that they have a problem, why do they know for certain that you're wrong? Yeah, Roy says no pain. Yeah, and Tony says their, their life is fine the way it is. See, they're not missing out on anything. So if, if, they, if they may say, yeah, I guess you're right, I have a problem, but guess what? That problem isn't interfering with my life, the, the stuff I want to do. So I guess the problem isn't that bad. So that's where we can't use a one sentence, <laughs> we can't use a one sentence um, miracle uh, uh, elevator speech to get people to actually Say, oh my! I gotta, you know, tell me more. I want to come meet. We, we have to use a conversation. Now, if we were going to develop a one-sentence conversation, here's what it would look like. I show Olmstead County residents born before 1954 how to get an average of 3612 in benefits they weren't aware of they qualify for by using integrated benefit software that draws from 21 different data points, including Social Security, state, and local databases. So here's so here's the thing. Um, in order for any elevator speech or conversation to be warranted as truthful and as interesting, guess what it has to have? It has to have one certain thing, and that is specificity. See, if you're looking for a TV set, if you're looking for a TV set and, um, and the store says, everything on sale today, everything on sale today, what are you thinking about that store? Are you in a, in a, uh, uh, in a rush to go down to that store if they're saying, hey, everything's, everything's on sale today? Uh, we got TVs, washing machines, everything's on sale. Are you going to run down to that store to look for your TV? Or what are you thinking about that store? If they're saying everything's on sale today, guess what you think about that store? Well, I don't know. But what's it on sale for 1%? I mean, they, they probably just have marked things up before they brought Yeah, nothing is on sale. That's what I believe. Uh, Roy, that nothing's on sale. Because if everything's on sale, nothing's on sale. Or they run sales all the time, so is there any urgency? 
See, but if a, if a TV store says this, if they say, if you're looking for a TV set, we have five 55-inch screen TVs, last year's model Panasonic 1347, and it's on, we're, we're knocking the price down to, by 50%. We're going to be selling them for $599. The regular price was $1,100. And any TV set we don't sell by 4 o'clock today, we're just going to donate to the Boys and Girls Club. Now, what are you going to do if you're looking for a TV set? You're going to run, exactly, Rick. You're going to run down there. And here's why. Could I check to see if uh, Panasonic for, uh, model 1349 was last year's model? Could I get online and check on that? Could I, if I wanted to, could I make sure that they were telling me the truth on that? Could I also check to see if uh, a, a 591 a was actually half price of what it was priced when, it was, uh, when they were selling it last year? Yes. Could I go down there at 4 o'clock and see if they actually if they have any left, if they're giving them away to the boys and girls. So, yes. Now, would I do all those things? No, I probably wouldn't. But just the fact that I know I could check up on those things makes me feel like they're telling the truth. See, specificity adds credibility. So that's why when you look at this, uh, at this um, uh, uh, elevator uh, speech here, I show Olmsted County res re residents. So if you don't, if you live, in, if you don't live in a an area that identifies itself by Olmsted County. So it could be Tri-County area. It could be the valley. I mean, whatever you use for geography where you're at, you're going to use that. And then why born before 1954? Because that's people who were born what? They're at least 60 years old. Where did we come up with the 3612? That's because I talked to Jeff last year. And he said the average of all the, uh, of the, all the 21s that he did, uh, the average savings in fees, et cetera, was 3612. So that's where we got that from. And then the 21-point checklist, we call it the integrated benefit software. Why? Because what does 21, what does a 21 point checklist mean to anybody? It doesn't mean anything. But integrated benefit software, could you kind of guess, at least glean, maybe what that software is about? Integrated benefit software? If you were to, to make a guess, you'd assume it was about what? Benefits. If you were taking even a better guess, you'd assume it's about some sort of a, it looks at a whole bunch of benefits and how they work together. But at least it's giving you some indication of what it does. And then 21 different data points. Again, we're adding just more specificity. So look at the specificity here. Olmsted County, 1954, 3612, integrated benefits software, 21 different databases. So look at all the specificity here. Now, if you walked, if somebody said, what do you do for a living? And I said, I show Olmsted County residents born before 1954 how to get an average of 3612 and $3,612 every single year in benefits they weren't aware of qualified for by using a new integrated benefit software that draw from 21 different data points, including Social Security, state, and local databases, how many people would I have lost if that's what I told them? How many people would I have lost if, if I rattled through? Yeah, all of them. Exactly, Matt. All of them. So you don't want to say that, but here's how you can break it down. Hey, what do you do for a living? Well, I show people in Olmstead County, born before 1954, how to get an average of $3,612 in benefits they weren't even aware that they are qualified for. What might somebody say after that? How? Exactly, Tony. How? So I said, well, I use this cool new software called Integrated Benefits Software. Have you heard of it? And what would they say to that? No. What, what it does is it draws from 21 different data points, including Social Security, state, local databases, and, and actually uh, uh, private databases, and it tells you all that you're owed. And it's amazing that the people we sit down with, they, don't, they aren't even aware of the thousands of dollars that they're owed in benefits here in Olmsted County. So now what are they going to say? How, really? How would I find out if I apply? You know, would that apply to me? Or what? They're going to then be interested and say, yeah, exactly. So this is a way. Now, here's the thing, though. After they say that, uh, you could try to get them into a 21. But if you don't, you can go right into one of our uh, 21 elevator conversations. So you see, though, um, we're talking about specificity. When we say, I show Olmsted County residents 44, 1954, how to get an average of 30. Do you see this? They're thinking that what? In their mind, they're thinking, oh, wait, because I live in Olmsted County, oh, because there must be something Olmsted County is giving people. There must be something that people in Olmsted County qualify for. So they're thinking, that, oh, boy, this is something. And here's the thing about it. even people that have it made, even people that have it made, that are living the life, how do they feel when they're missing a benefit they're owed? If they're missing, so if they if they go to a restaurant 
and they go ahead and pay the bill for $75, and then when they go out to the, uh, the uh, parking lot, they hear that everybody else in the restaurant was got, given free dinners, what would they do? They don't need the $75. It means nothing to them. They're living the life. But they what? What would they do if they found out everything in the restaurant except for them got a 70, you know, got for free, got a free dinner? What would they do? They'd go in and complain, right? So see, when when people think they're owed something they're not getting, then even satisfied people get what? You know, getting a lot of answers. Perturbed. Exactly. So what we're making them feel like here is what? There's stuff that they're owed that they're missing out on. And in fact, is that the case, guys? With the 21-point checklist, do they find out that there's money that they're owed that they don't even know that they, that, that they uh, uh, aren't accessing? Gene says yes. Who else? Yeah, so what are those? What is the money they're owed? All the fees that they're paying that they have no realization that they're paying. Guys, I got three questions here about where does it what where does the thirty six twelve come from, guys? Where did I say? Where did I say the three thousand six hundred twelve dollars comes from? Yeah, the average savings that after over the the two thousand fourteen, uh, I went to Jeff and we calculated all the average savings in fees and what are the fees? Expense fees, turnover fees, unnecessary insurance fees, all sorts of things. And this does not even include taxation. And Jeff said here in a couple of weeks is actually going to do how to do a mock tax return. If you if you started to do talk, mock, uh, mock tax returns, that 3612 is going to jump to 7,000 plus in unnecessary tax or in unnecessary or in benefits that they would be owed. So this is just this is just the average. The 3612 is just the average we saved clients that ended up working with our 5Q trained advisors in unnecessary fees, whether it was insurance fees, uh, expense fees, uh, turnover fees, etc. Does that make sense? Does everybody get that now? Yep, yeah, that's right, Bev. This is the fees that they um, would save if they work after they work with us. This is how much more money we're going to be able to put in their pocket by working with us. So, is this a mini conversation that all of you uh, think you could master? I mean, is it is it too much for you guys to master? Good. Perfect. I'm getting a lot of yeses. Good. So this is this is and, and I don't, uh, Missy, we'll probably put this with the other. Um, uh, well, I'll show you where we'll put it here in a second. Okay. But they still may ask, now this will get a lot of people to do what? 21s. But they still may want more information, right? So they still may ask you, how do you do that? So now you have to go into the elevator conversation, okay? And the elevator conversation is, uh, oops, I can get, get it to here. So the elevator conversation, if you go to getting started with 5Q, so has everybody seen that? Missy, you seen that? The website? Yep, I sure can. Okay, good. So we get hit start, getting started with 5Q, then we drag it down, and there's several different elevator conversations you could have. So we'd, we'd go ahead and put this, we'd say mini conversation, Missy, and we'll put it right here if we can. Perfect. Yep, I'll take care of that. But these longer ones, the elevator conversations, explain what you do. That's where I say, hey, the little things are the big things that get you. We go through the surgery analogy, and then we give them an, an actual example. And what we use is generally the power of attorney, right? Or you can use down here the elevator conversation. Oops the elevator conversation with DocuBank, where you say, well, let me give you an example, and you pull out your DocuBank card and say, and go through the conversation, do you carry your medical power of attorney with you? Or you can go way down here to the very bottom and convert your current clients to the 5Q process, introduce your current clients to the 5Q process, and you talk about the fact that a, a loved one, you know, I use my father, that I, that I uh, my father never let me um, deal with his financial things, but then he got to a point where he had to, and I looked at all the stuff that he was not looking at, and I was like, holy cow, his investments are great. His retirement income plan is great. But he's got all these other things that could just cause wreak havoc on his financial, personal, and family well-being. And then I started to look at my own situation. I was missing all those things. I started to look at my client's situation. They were missing all those. There's 21 things that everybody's missing that could create havoc with themselves, their family, or their finances. And then you can give an example. Now, where do you get those... Examples. Well, again, we use the power of attorney. You should be an excellent at the power of attorney by now. 
we give you the, the example of the DocuBank here in this, conver in this elevator conversation here. The other place you're going to get excellent at it is, is uh, if we go to preparing for disclosure meeting, see this 714 uh, 14 truth and consequences? I'm walking, I walk you through in that coaching call that I did last summer on all 21 issues on the consequences, how any single one of those items, how the, how the survivor's guide could create havoc with their family and with their finances, how the power of attorney could create havoc with their own personal well-being and, the, and their family. So I go through all 21 things on how the, and the consequences of each one of those things. So here's the great thing. When you're doing your conversation with these folks, oops, if I have to go back here. Sorry about that, guys. So when you are having this conversation, you have, and they say, how do you do that or what, what kind of things you do, you have 21 different consequences you can go through that if they don't work with you, would create 21 different havocs with themselves, their family, or their finances. So how many people, after you go, well, how about this consequence? So they say, well, I'm not concerned about that. How about this consequence? I'm not concerned about that. You really think you're going to go through 21 consequences, and they're going to tell you that they're not concerned about any of the 21 consequences? If they do, then they're what? They're unreasonable. And we don't want to work with unreasonable people. Yeah, they're lying, for and I would agree with that. So, so... Do you get the power that if you're good at this, so if you're good at um, this, again, not this whole long thing, but break it into three little questions, three little bits. And then when they do, if they want to do a 21, terrific. If they don't, then you go into the conver elevator conversation. Does that make sense? Now, where are the places that you can use this? Where can you use the 21 elevator speech and the elevator conversation? Because the elevator conversation... That will take three, four, or five minutes, but is it worth three or four or five minutes of a conversation, guys, to have them tell you that they want to do a 21? Is it worth investing three, four, or five minutes to get them to tell you why they want to do a 21? Yes, it is. Okay, so Dino came up. Where do you want to use this? Dino said referrals. I would totally agree with that. Some other place. So anytime somebody, so referrals is the first place. I didn't even put that on here, so thanks, Dino. The, the second place is when someone asks you what you do, when you're at church having coffee, when you're at a networking event, when you're at a party, when you're in the elevator. Someone asks what you do, you can use it. But there's some other places we're going to use it. What if somebody is hesitating on an appointment at an event? Could you use it there? You know, you've already harvested the 80%. Now you've got the 20% who are hesitating. You can circle back and what? Have that conversation with them. Could you use it there? How about when somebody's, when you're at that first meeting and they're hesitating about giving you all of their information? Could you use it there? So this is not something that you should, this is, uh, that you should just uh, be okay at. This is something you should master because you can use that everywhere and it's part of the formula that gets you to create an ATM machine. Okay? So any questions on that? Any questions on, on how to use this, where to use it, is to, can I get the promise that all of you are going to be doing this? Because you're going to hear me ask you when we're having our coaching calls, etc. I'm going to be asking you guys to give me the elevator speech because if you're awesome at this, guess what? It's half of the formula. It's half of the formula where you create an ATM machine for yourself. And when you have that ATM, the world is your oyster. You can make as much money or as little money as you want because you are now in control. And what do we all want to be in, guys? In, this, in, our in, in our business, what do we all want to be in? We want to be in control of our income, don't we? And the great thing about an elevator conversation is if you're great at it, how much does it cost to use? Heck, you know what I'd do if I was great at an elevator speech? You know the banks? You know how the banks have those, tour, those bus tours where they'll take all the seniors around and they'll take them to the local brewery or they'll take them to a little town 20 minutes away or something like that? If I was great at the elevator speech, what would I do? I'd, I'd buy my $30 ticket, have a blast with a bunch of uh, people who are retired, and use my elevator speech for a whole day. And how much is that? So I'm 30 bucks, I'm in front of 30 people. And how many appointments am I going to get? So if you're great at the elevator, this is not a skill that you should be piddling around with. This is a skill that you should be awesome at, phenomenal at. Do you, you get my... Uh, do, do, do you understand why? If you're good at this, your marketing costs plummets. It plummets. 
that make sense? Super. Any questions? Any concerns? Coolest. So then I want, I'm, we're going to have ECA talk to us about uh, a product. I don't know if it's been out. They'll have to explain whether it's new or been out there a while, but I love this product. Because here's the thing, guys. Let me, I'm going to give you a little quiz here. Fin, fi, fixed index annuities. What's the goal with fixed index annuities? What, what are we looking at? What, where do we use fixed index annuities for? What do we use it for? What, what part of the portfolio do we use it for? The safety part. So what if a fixed index annuity only earned you 4%? Would that be okay? Yeah, it'd be okay. Because what is it designed to do? It takes over for the, the, the guarantee side. We're not trying. The growth is on the growth side. So the growth is for managed money. The growth is for mutual funds. The growth is for ETFs. The growth is for index funds. That's where the growth is, the fixed index annuity side. All we're trying to do there is get them guaranteed uh, uh, principal and the highest rate of return we can. And is there anything that's going to give you a higher rate of return than a fixed index annuity and guaranteed in today's world? Is there anything out there that's going to give you a greater rate of return on the guaranteed side than FIAs? Exactly. No, there's not. And then, Missy, I should press OK on this, or is that taken care of? Um, I just actually switched it over to Jerry. So. Oh, super. Yep. Okay, so, so uh, Jerry and uh, Jeff Van Grinsen are going to talk to about, about a product that is awesome, phenomenal for uh, the guaranteed side of people's portfolios. So, guys, have at it. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. A happy New Year, everybody. The product we're going to talk about, we are excited about. And just to let everybody know, um, you know, we like to do these product calls so that whenever there's, there's new ideas and new products come out, that we think, uh, you know, we should bring out to the, the public so everybody can be aware of it. We just want to make sure everybody's aware of it. It's not the be-all, end-all, so if there's things that you're using and, and you like it in different products, we're not saying you have to replace what you're doing, but we just want to make sure everybody's aware of it because we think that this is a, a good product for you guys. So this product is from Genworth, and it's called the Secure Living Growth Plus Income. And I think this product is real well. Um, it, like Mike said, index annuities are, are for guarantees, but if we can get some growth along the way and get the... Uh, the best product for that, that's nice to have as well. So this product works real well for growth and income. So if either of those things are what you're looking for, I think that the Genworth Growth Plus Income product works well for them. So we'll move through here and we'll start to look at some of the details of it. So issue ages, just kind of simple housekeeping type things. Issue ages, it's 45 to 80 on this product. It's available in most states. For details on those things, like always at the end of the call, Jeff and I will answer some questions, but real detailed questions as well. Um, go ahead, give Jeff or myself a call, and we've been more than happy to answer those things for you. So premium, minimum premium, qualified, non-qualified is $25,000 up to a million dollars without prior approval. Uh, there's four or five different interest crediting strategies, which we're really excited about with this product, and Jeff will go over those with you in just a minute here. And we'll just keep kind of moving along here. All right, here's some of the features here that are, it's got a, a bailout cap, which Jeff will go over details on. How the bailout cap works is if the caps ever do drop below a certain number, and Jeff will go over those details, uh, you actually can get out of the product without any surrender charges. So there's a guarantee right there for you. 10% free withdrawals after year two. And then this product does have an income doubler for the income rider. So if you have the income turned on after year two as an income doubler. So if your income is $10,000 a year, they'll double that for up to five years, up to $20,000 a year. And then sometimes with income doublers, the thing about that for long-term care needs, that only comes into play if you're using the lifetime income. One of the things I like about this product is they call it the growth plus income. They actually give you an advantage if you're just using the product for growth. You don't ever want to turn on the income. Well, with this product, should you uh, become confined to a, a medical facility for 30 consecutive days, for the growth people, they'll actually double your free withdrawals from 10% to 20% after the first contract year on this policy as well. That's one of the other unique features, I think, with it that kind of add to the growth plus income story of it. But I'm going to have Jeff go over some of the interest uh, crediting strategies, which I think are pretty exciting about this product. 
All right, these are the uh, the basic strategies here. There's uh, four different strategies plus a fixed account here. Um, as you can see, this product uh, resembles uh, um, some enhancements you may be familiar with. Um, any indexing strategy or fixed account you choose, you get a 50% enhancement at the end of the year. So um, if you take that first strategy there, it is also banded. So there's three different bands based on the premium you put in, 25 to 100, 100 to 250, and 250 or more. At the end of the year, whatever strategy you choose, you'll get a 50% enhancement. So if I look at that first strategy there, um, and the current cap is 2.9% there, if I were to get the 2.9 at the end of the year, I'd get the 50% enhancement. That would bring me up to 4.3% credited in my income account and my accumulation account. Now, right below that, you'll see the bailout cap, and that's 2.2. So if Genworth were to ever renew this cap in this 10-year history at less than 2.2, you can get your full accumulation account from this strategy, and this is really important, any strategy. So let's per se, I don't like the annual point-to-point, -point, but I'm in any of these other strategies below it. I can get all my money from any other strategy out penalty free. So the bailout cap is tied to the annual point to point, but you have access to any and all your money if they don't renew at that uh, any one of the, or, uh, that annual point to point strategy. The second strategy right below that is the two year trigger. This is the strategy that's kind of getting the most uh, interest. And basically this is an all or nothing in the sense that as long as the market is positive, each year for two years in a row, you would get the 8% credited there. So in the first year, if it's up just one, per, one tenth of 1% or whatever it might be, and the second year it's up one tenth of 1%, you would be credited 8% plus the 50% enhancement. So in that case, you would be credited 12%. Now, the drawback to that strategy is if you'd say, well, gosh, what if it's only up one of the two years? Well, in that strategy, you would just be credited 1% plus the 50% enhancement, which would give you 1.5%. So you don't get nothing over the two years. You'd be getting a small um, uh, growth there of 1.5%. The strategy below that is your monthly point-to-point -point strategy. Um, most agents are familiar with that, so that's 1.4% per month for 12 months plus the 50% enhancement. The strategy below that is your annual performance triggered. So that would be 2.35% on an annual basis there, plus your 50% enhancement. Um, when I was talking to the Genworth rep, he said a lot of agents will um, blend this strategy, the performance of the one year, with the two-year trigger. So just in case it protects them on a, uh, when there's just growth in one year and not two years, that they get some 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 growth in there, and instead of just one and a half, they'll get some three or four percent growth in the one year, and then they'll also get the big growth, that ten or twelve percent growth in the two-year trigger, and then you also have your um, your fixed account right below at a modest one, one and a quarter, one point three five. Now keep in mind those all get the fifty percent enhancement, so it'd be one and a half, one point seven five, and close to one point nine percent there. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody understands how that two-year trigger works. Um, Jerry's going to pull the screen up here. So the two-year trigger works. Uh, let's just look at the strategy. If we, this is all. All these strategies are tied to the S&P 500. If the S&P 500 starting value was at 1,000 and the ending value was 1,045, and it doesn't have to be 1,045, it could be 1,001. That would be a positive year. The next year it could start at 1,001 and be 1,002, and that would be a second year of positive growth. You would be credited the 8%, and this is at the, at the low band, plus the 50% enhancement would give you 12%. That's for the I'm two gonna, years in a row. I'm going to oh, jump go in there, Jeff. So, yep. guys, if you ask somebody, said, do you think the market will go up more than 1% each of the next two years, what would, what would they say? If you ask them... If the market, do you think the market will go up at least 1% over the next two years, uh, each of the years, what would they say? Yes, they'd say yes. Because if they say no, then we'd better get them all into what? If they think the market's not going to go up with the, uh, at least 1% over the next, uh, each year for the next two years, what, if, if they don't believe that, we need to get them into what? Something guaranteed, exactly. But most people, especially people that love the market, 
are going to say what to that? They're going to say yes. And say, so now can I ask you a question? What are um, one-year, two-year CDs paying? What are they going to say to that? What are they going to say? One- or two-year CDs, what are they paying? One- or two-year bonds. Yeah, one, yeah, basically 0.5% or whatever. Same thing. How about bonds? Same thing, about a half a percent. So what if, if the market went up um, for our guaranteed side, if we, if we want guaranteed money, so if we believe the market's going to go up, one uh, percent at least each of the two years. What if I could show you how to get a guaranteed rate of six uh, percent rate of return each year or the next two years? How many people are going to like that versus a half a percent? How many people are going to like that? Or so here's it's an easy sell, guys. Do you think that the market will go up at least one percent over the next couple? Of, you know, each year for the next couple of years. If they say yes, well then we know they like the market, right? And then it's going to be a really easy sell. If they say no, well, then we got to get them into guaranteed things. Okay? So then, what, so when they say yes, no, I think the market will go up at least 1% over the next couple of years, each year, of the, each year for the next couple of years. They say, great. And what are, what are CDs, one- and two-year CDs playing? What are two- one or two-year? And you can just show them that in the, uh, on the Internet or, or have a, show them what uh, two-year CDs are paying. Show them what two-year bonds are paying. Show them what money marks are, markets are paying. So for our guarantee then, folks, if we believe the market's going to go up at least 1% each uh, each of the two years, then for our guaranteed side, would you rather make 0.5% or would you rather make 6%? What are they going to say to that? What are they going to say to that, guys? They're going to say, absolutely. Boom. Sold. So you don't even have three questions and they're sold on this product if they like the market. If they don't like the market, well, there's other things we can show them, right? So a couple of questions, uh, Jeff. Uh, da -da -da -da, uh, well, the one they're asking, how Genworth compared to the uh, Allen 222, I think we're actually talking about that now. This is, does not work like the 222. It's a totally different concept. Issue age based on annuitant owner, question mark. That is annuitant 43 and owner is 83. Would that work? This is, this is owner driven. Owner driven, okay. Yeah. Uh, for the two-year trigger, is the 12% gain for the two years or 12% years? 12% over the two years, right? So it would be 6% that's, that's each of the two years. Two years. Yep, so you're gonna, that's, where, that's where you see where I'm selling it there. A question, are the two-year periods rolling periods? Uh, they're two consecutive years, that's correct. So it is a rolling period, yes, yeah, so it's 24 months. And then the other question is, uh, oh, no, he's, he's got that, yeah. So that's right, one and two years, three and four years, five and six years, yep, one, that's right, that's exactly how it works. Perfect, okay, so, so does everybody so get it, how were, you can sell this thing? Super easy. Yeah, okay, so as you guys were saying, audience, we're, we're, we're having, obviously, a phenomenal success with Allianz. This is just, uh, I think, uh, another carrier trying to um, be creative with a product that would compete with them. Obviously, they're trying to just you know, find something, their little niche. And, and I think this strategy is kind of a neat strategy. Um, the Allianz product has, has a lot of positives, and this has a lot of positives through guys looking for something slightly different. And kind of like you were just talking about, so it's, uh, it's the 8% that you end up getting, and then with the 50% enhancement, it brings it up to 12%, which divided over two years, and that's a 6% return. That's if you're between the $25,000 and $100,000 band. With most of the guys, the average tickets are, are, are well over $100,000. You're going to be looking at the 10% 10, 10 credit with the 50% bonus, bringing it up to 15% which would be 7.5% over two years. Yep. So that's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a strategy, like Mike said, if you use the, the positioning like Mike's using there, I think, uh, I think you, can do, you, know, you can do very well, and a lot of clients would like it. And, and I like the strategy as well. And they have other strategies, the annual point-to-point, -point, the monthly, that you can co-mingle with it. And then that 50% credit enhancement, that's a walk-away value. I think Jeff brought that up. That gets invested right into the contract value. There's no strings where you have to take an income to get it or a death benefit to get it. That's a walk-away value. So this is a 10-year contract. After 10 years, if the client can walk away with their contract, and they walk away with that 50% bonus. And then, or if they die, they get it as well. Cool. And a couple questions. Is there a vesting on the CE? I'm assuming he's wondering, do I have to do my CE all over again for this product? Is that, is that <laughs> oh, on the credit? Excuse me, on the credit. No, there isn't a vesting period on the on the credit enhancement. You can oh. walk away with that at any at any time. So 
if you if you wanted to pay your surrender charges after five years, yeah, you would walk away with that 50% credit enhancement. That's vested into the policy immediately after every year at the at the anniversary date. That's a good question. And are the income benefit rider are the income rider benefits built in automatically, or do they have them to add them as a rider? That's a great question, and so that will actually lead into my next point because I'm going to talk about the income benefits. Okay, before you so, do that, then. I'm going to ask you another question I think that deals with this then. Does the entire 100 k have to be placed in the two-year strategy or can it be split into multiple strategies to, in order to get that higher payout? No, you can actually put in uh, yeah, the 50% the bonus works on any of the strategies, and you can allocate as much as you want into any different strategy. So you could have 25% uh, in the annual point-to-point, 25% -point, in the two-year trigger, and... 50% in the uh, in the monthly cap, so it doesn't all have to be in the two-year trigger. You get that 50% bonus on any of the strategies that you that you choose, based on the total amount invested, not how much is in the strategy. Right. Right. And then, Mike, I just want to make sure everybody understood the but the bailout cap itself is just off the annual point to point, but it all the other strategies are affected by that. So if they cannot renew the annual point to point at that you have access to any of your money in any of the other strategies penalty free. And then so is the credit to, go ahead. Oh, so it's tied to the one strategy, but it, it's 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 relevant to every strategy. And then is the credit enhancement a rolling two years as well? No, that's on an annual basis except for the two year, that happens to be a twenty four month. Okay, just that one. And then yeah. even if you're not in the annual point to point that's uh, for the bailout. Yeah, so let's just say I was in the monthly point to point uh, and and my and it's just humming along nice, but all of a sudden we're in the third year and they lower that cap on the annual point to point down to 1.5. I could get all my money even though I've never participated in the annual point, I could get all my money money penalty free. Oh, so if you're in the two year strategy and they lower the annual point to point lower than that, you could still get all your money out. Even That's though you never correct. participated in that. Okay, That's awesome. That's correct. They tie it to the annual point to point instead of okay. each strategy. Otherwise, you'd have so many different strategies and blends. But it, but if they cannot renew that annual point to point, you can no matter what strategy you're in, you can choose if you want to take all your money out. You can take a partial or a full surrender. Perfect. Okay, now we can get into the the question: Are the income and rider benefits built in automatically? Do you have to add them as rider? Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll go over and we'll talk about how the, in, the income works. So you have two options on the income here, and I'll get into fees and, and, uh, and what the options are. With this product, the income rider is built into the product. So it works a lot like the 360, if anyone's familiar with how that works. So with the income rider on this, we have the choice of increasing income or a level payout. So uh, increasing income, well, if you choose the increasing income, you're going to start at a 1% lower payout, and I'll show you guys how the payouts work, and then if we really want to get into details on this, I think the best thing would be to call up, and we can go over with it with you uh, the, the details of how it works. But with the increase in income, how the increase works is, uh, based on the crediting strategy, based on whatever you're credited on that particular year, your income will increase by your index credits at the end of the year. So to give you an example of that, on the two-year strategy, if I were to get a 15% uh, a a, a or excuse me a 10% increase while I have income turned on and let's say my income I was getting $10,000 a year that's what my annual income was and I were to get that 10% index credit from the two-year trigger strategy my income would now increase by a total of 10% so now my income instead of being $10,000 a year it would be $11,000 a year so your income is going to increase based on the performance of the index strategies. Now, the income, and we'll go. I'm going to go down here and show you how the payouts work. The income rider is built into the product, so and it comes with a 1.10 percent fee. So, whether we're using it for income or we're using the product for growth, there's a 1.10 percent fee. So for even if we're looking at this product for a, from a growth perspective, it has a lot of growth potential in it, and it's, it's kind of like with a, a, another product that you're using for growth, there's a fee on it, it's 1.10%. I think it's a pretty pretty reasonable fee for a pretty good 
growth product and you can almost look at it like you get an income rider for free on it. So whether you want the income rider or not, um, it's a, a pretty pretty reasonable charge. So we're looking here for age 60, a single annuitant, the starting payout on this product is 4.8%. Um, that's pretty standard. I think that's right there with most of the other riders at that age. And then how the product works is you get the growth in the product, which is going to grow your total uh, income bucket. But also, every year that you defer your income, if we slide over here, your uh, payout percentage is going to increase by 0.35% for the first five years. Then after the fifth year, it's going to increase by 0.45%. So your payout percentage is going to be growing by almost a half a point every single year, plus your account is growing by the index strategies that, uh, that you choose. So that's how the, the income on the product works. It's very similar. Anyone who's uh, familiar with how the 360 works, it's almost identical with how the 360's um, uh, income rider rolls up. It's the contract value um, plus any index credits and the 50% enhancement plus every year you defer it, the payout percentage grow, uh, grows. So Jerry, and I want to jump in there a second. Yeah. So, cause, and I'm going to hammer on this a couple times over the next month. Um, guys, because I want to talk about this income <laughs> strategy and the fact that it's going up, uh, or that, that they can pull out, or, you know, that the income choice rate is going to be at about 4.8, 4.3 plus is going up with increases in rates of return uh, that, that, that's credited as well as these other things. Guys, if, if you run into somebody who does not have enough money to retire, what should you do? If you run into a client that did not have enough money to retire, what should you do? What should you do? Somebody tell me. Do you want a client who does not have enough money to retire? Yeah, tell them to keep working, Paul. Exactly. Because they are going to be what? Because when they run out of money, who are they going to blame themselves? Who are they going to blame? You. So is it possible, if you retire without enough money, is it a good idea to try to grow yourself, grow your money out of that problem? Do you want a client who says, I don't have enough money, but I think I can make enough return on the market to grow myself out of that problem? Do you want that guy as a client? No. So, yeah, walk away exactly right. So here's the thing. What's our job then? What's our job with people's money in retirement? To, gr to grow it as far as they can? What's our job in people's retirement? To, keep, to make sure that they what? Keep them ahead. Keep it safe and make sure it lasts. Make sure they stay ahead of what? Inflation. And what's inflation averaged? If we take health care out, because we got a health care... Uh, we've got a health care um, rider here. So take health care out. What's inflation? 3%. So if we're making more than 3%, then we're what? If we're making more than 3% on their accounts, we're what? Golden. We're ahead. So is our job to make them as much money as possible? What are they going to do? If you get them a 10% rate of return next year, how will that change their life? Are they going to they gonna sell their house and buy the mansion they had their eye on? Are they going to sell their car and buy a Bentley? How will a 10% rate return change their life? Our job is to keep them ahead of inflation. And is this income rider keeping them ahead of inflation? Is keeping 50% of their money uh, allowing them to stay ahead of inflation and guaranteed helping them stay ahead of inflation? So our goal is not to grow their money as much as possible because that's not going to help them. It will not change their life at all. But you know what? Moving backwards, what will that do to their life? Having a down year or, t or a down ten year, like we saw in the 2000s, what would that do? So just keep that in mind. So the income rider is perfect. Yeah, that's a great, that's a very great point. This is the keep up with inflation. So with uh, the Genworth uh, annuity, we have guaranteed principal, and then even when they decide to turn on income, they're they're able to keep up with inflation with the product. So um, anybody wants to, uh, uh, some some more details on how the income rider works or take a look at it. We can get you those details, and we can we can go over some, uh, more of those details with you. I think it's best on the income rider uh, details. Everyone's going to have kind of a case by case situation. Give Jeff and myself a, a buzz, and we can go over with that. And then, last but not least, um, just to kind of keep going on a theme here, where there's some similarities between this and some of the other Allianz products out there, I'll just talk about uh, compensation with this. So, on the the this annuity right here, uh, comp on it is seven percent. And then they also have um, how it works is they have the same kind of uh, um, 
layout is uh, all ants does so it's seven percent commission and then once you reach a million dollars in production they're going to give you a bump up to seven and a half plus they're going to pay you that extra 50 basis points retroactive on that million that you just wrote so what that means is once you hit a million dollars in production all the business moving forward you're going to be at seven and a half and then they're also going to send you a check for five grand which is 50 basis points on a million dollars and then when you reach three million dollars they're going to move you up from seven and a half to eight, and then they're going to pay you another 50 basis points retroactive on that three million. And then when we hit five million and ten million, they're going to do the same thing. So it's uh, kind of a, a, a tiered type comp structure, like some of the other products that some of you guys might be familiar with. So um, that's uh, that's that's the Gen Worth growth plus income annuity. Uh, I think it's a uh, uh, you know has a some, some real good legs on the crediting strategies and uh, has increased income. And if you have any questions at all... Well, I'm going to jump in there with a question. This just drives me freaking bananas. We have some questions about is there a trailer. Guys, if I, if I go to apply for a, a job and they offer to pay me seven years, pay me seven years right now when I start with the company, regardless of whether I stay with the company or not, or pay me every two weeks. Which one would I take? Which, which one would you take, guys? If they offer to pay you all a lump sum, all your money right up front, whether you stay with the company or not, what would you do? I take it all day long. Anybody that wouldn't take that as a what, guys? Take it all. Because what can happen in the next seven years? Can people die in the next seven years? Can people want to move their money in the next seven years? Can get what what? And seven years from now, will there be better products seven years from now, guys? Will there be better products seven years from now? So what are you going to want to do seven years from now with this product? I just don't get the whole, I want, a, I want and here's why, guys. You haven't sat on my side of the, of the table. I have seen money manager after money manager after money manager crash and burn every time there's a big market crash. Why? What does everybody want to do with their money? They want to leave. So the money manager loses the money that's leaving and the fact that the money went down. So if the market goes down 50%, they end up losing 75% of their income. Why? Because the market went down 50% and they lost the half of their clients. So don't, I don't get Why do you want to put it as a trail? That's crazy. Get the lump sum up front. Okay? Get the lump yeah, sum up front. Yes. Yeah, get, the, get, get that lump sum, and I agree with you on that, Mike. And uh, they do, but I will say, you know, because uh, they do have the, the trailers, I would go for the, the up front because, like Mike said, you never know what, what, may, what may happen. If you can get everything up front, go get it. They do have trailers on this as well. So other questions here. Uh, is the point, is the half a percent retroactive? Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, create your own trail, Tom. I totally agree with that. Every seven years, you, do, you, you get another, you, you go re, uh, find a better product. And you get it paid seven years up front again. That's your own trail. Absolutely right. Good. Any other? Uh, uh, one more. Uh, uh, can you just go through the commission one more time? I have two questions on the commission. Yeah, yeah. Just go quickly. ahead. No, you go. That's no. That's what. What is it? Quick, okay, it it's uh, it's seven percent. Seven percent. Uh, day one. Once you hit a million dollars from production, you're going to be at moving forward on any other business. It'll be at seven and a half percent plus. They're going to pay you that 50 basis points that you didn't get for the first million. They're going to pay you on a retroactive. So they're going to send you a check for 50 basis points on that million in production that you just wrote. And then the business moving forward, you're going to get paid 7.5 on. And then once you hit the $3 million production level, you're now going to move up to not 7.5 commission, but to 8% commission, all business moving forward. And then they're going to pay you another 50 basis points on that three million that you just wrote because you didn't get paid that additional fifty, so that would be an additional check for fifteen grand once you hit three million. Yeah, just like Allianz. Yep. Just like Allianz, it works exactly like Allianz, and they have another trigger at five million and another one at ten million. So if you have any additional questions on this, please call uh, Jeff Van Grinsman or or uh, Jerry or Scott instead. They'll help you with this. But uh, it's an easy sale, guys. So ask them. Do you think the market's going to up one? 1% uh, a year over the next two years. They say yes. Then they ask them, what's, what guaranteed money right now is paying 
uh, you know, over one or two years. Well, it's paying a half a percent. You can show them if they don't. And then say, so if we believe that that's what's going to happen, guess where our guaranteed money needs to go? Okay? So cool. So if you have any further questions, give them a, give them a uh, holler. And, uh, again, appreciate you guys. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you all on Friday. Thanks, everybody.